Hey guys, it's Brinley and my special friend tonight, and I'll let him introduce himself in a minute. So we had a little bit of a glitch this morning. Um, I did not properly communicate. That's on me. As most of you know, it's been a little bit of a, a wonky week this week. And so I dropped the ball. I'm allowed to drop the ball. I'm human. I give myself grace. Um, and I think everything happens for a reason because this is a really hot topic. And I think just having um, Zach and I here chatting about it is going to add a lot of value and it's going to give him the opportunity to actually take the presentation to a higher level. So I think everything kind of happens for a reason. So Zach, I'm just going to let you take it away. I'm going to monitor questions in the chat box, guys. So if you have questions, put them in. I'll make sure that Zach answers. Otherwise, Zach, they came to hear you, not me. Oh. Awesome, Brindley. I, I super love it. And I, I normally say, you know, an appointment at 8.30 and it's 8.30 at Western time, but here I am 12 hours late. You were being very gracious. And I, I think that was my miscommunication. So thank you for saying that. And I apologize for everyone that showed up at 8.30 looking for me to show what we got going on. So <clears throat> I am Zach Went. I'm a, a Keller Williams Maps coach, mastery coach. Um, I have uh, a good number of clients I've been doing that for a while. I have a real estate team. We have a few other businesses that we run too. And there was two topics that we wanted to talk about today. Number one was um, one of the metrics we, we look for in coaching and coaching in general is that we want to see a healthy increase. And so looking for between 20 to 30% year over year is a good metric to see when we're seeing that. My average coaching client employing these systems, which ultimately come from um, my, my idol in real estate, Gary Keller, are about 80%. And so we're seeing some major growth with this. And I'm excited to share it with you. And I, I have a whole presentation that we're going to go through with this. Yay. The second thing that Brindley wanted to go over was some of the things that we're doing with command. We're seeing some pretty remarkable things with command. And so let me share the presentation here. And see if this is working. How's that look, Brindley? Looks great. Looks great. Awesome. Picture. So if I'm going too fast here for uh, you guys, and um, just feel free to reach out to us. So coachz at kw.com. That's the best email for us. We have some scripts that we're going to be going through. We have them all typed up. Feel free to take screenshots. But if you just want the presentation, shoot us an email and I'll send you the presentation. So there, there's no secrets here, especially with friends of Brindley. I am just thrilled to death to be sharing this with you. So Let's jump into it. I wanted to boil the real estate experience, the, the whole system, if you will, down to a single infographic. And Brindley, is that showing up on your screen, the, the circles? Do you see that? Yep. And it's showing awesome. up on Facebook too. So we're good. Fantastic. So Gary says that nothing else matters until we have enough leads. And when you really study the top mega agents that are out there or the top teams that are out there, the teams that are literally selling thousands of houses. Typically they have three, no more than five lead sources. From there, we enter into what we say is a connect and capture phase. We determine if they're looking to do real estate, we determine if we want to kick them to the curb or we determine if we want to cultivate them. And so when we're connecting and capturing, if we're going to close for an appointment or if we're going to put them into what we're looking for as a lead, I, I say there's four bullet points or four parts of a definition of a lead. Number one is we're looking at they're going to transact this calendar year, and we're going to break down this break this down into some really concrete steps on what you can take. Whatever your goal is, you're going to have some extreme clarity. And honestly, when it comes to coaching, clarity is 50% of the heavy lifting. And so number one, when it, uh, for a definition of a lead is I'm looking that they're going to transact this calendar year. Number two, we've asked them the six connecting questions on page 95 of the shift. Who are they? What are they looking to do? Where are they looking to do it? When are they looking to do it? How are they looking to do it? And we're going deep with these questions. Uh, number three, we've captured at least a piece of their information. We have permission to follow up. And number four, I particularly use command. I know it's not all KW agents necessarily on this call. And so it, it's the best CRM is the one that you use, right? I love command. I'm going to show off some command stuff that we're doing right now, but they have to be into a CRM and they have to be labeled. Now, when I say labeled, a 10 is somebody that's going to be listing or selling this month or listing or buying rather this month. A nine would be someone that's doing it next month. Eight would be so on and so forth. You get how it goes from there. The cool thing with this, Brindley, is when we start labeling our leads like this, we can predict the business for that month. When we accurately ask those questions and we go three deep with those questions, we really go what we call scuba diving 
with those questions versus water skiing, you know, asking surface questions. When we go scuba diving and ask, why is that important? You have three bedrooms. Tell me more, tell me more, tell me more. Then I can really get to the heart of their motivation. And then I can accurately predict when they're going to be looking to buy or sell there. So again, the, the circle is on the top there. And I'll, I'll share this with you. If you want a copy of this, it's coachz at kw.com. Shoot us an email. We'll send it your way or find us on the Gamify Real Estate Facebook page, uh, the page that we just started up. We, we generate the leads. We get into the connect and capture phase. From there, we determine where they're going to go, to the curb, closing to appointment, or cultivate. We kick them to the curb. Or, Brindley, let me ask you this, because I love the interaction here, and you're a genius. Everyone knows that, and I absolutely love you. Why would you kick a lead to a curb? Maybe they're not ready right now. Maybe they're not qualified. Maybe they're not serious. Maybe they're a stalker, a weirdo. I like that, a stalker, weirdo. <laughs> Maybe their mom's in real estate and they're going to have a really bad Thanksgiving right. if they decide to use us, right? Maybe maybe they're just weird. They're off. You know, one of the things like in real estate, when we're lead generating enough, we get to pick who we want to work with. What if they're a jerk? You know what? Jerks tend to hang out with other jerks. We don't want to work with jerks. And so we release them and can go work with a real estate company. And that's totally fine. That, that, those are some of the reasons we're going to kick them to the curb cultivate phase like and you can see below this oops i'm jumping ahead the cultivate phase there's a number below this does that show up on the screen the the percentage there and i don't know if you can see my cursor either yes the percentage does 80 to 90 percent 80 to 90 percent of our business comes from the cultivate phase so when we're generating internet leads when we're generating any kind of leads we're putting them into our system into that database that crm from there, we're building a pipeline. And, you know, Gary talks about an eight by eight and 36 touch, which I don't think we need to go in here. But there's an ongoing touch system that cultivates these leads. This is where the majority of your business is going to come from. When we look at, again, the, the big mega agents out there, the big teams out there, the majority of their business always comes from their sphere. So the four conversations, we could jump into that a little bit, but this, this is where the magic really happens. When we answer these four bullet points, again, transacting this calendar year, six connecting questions a ship, captured their information, permission to follow up and have them in your CRM, which I love command and have them labeled. We're starting to get really dangerous with your goal. And I wanna break this down a little bit with you guys. So jumping over to the next slide here, this is where the magic really happens. We know on average, these, these stats down here, you can see with the, the phone here, on average, and this is based off of hundreds of thousands of phone calls, it takes about 12 contacts to find a lead, depending on the sources that we're doing. And that you can see that these some of my favorite sources, I, I blew it up right here, and we're going to talk about internet leads in just a second. It takes about five leads to get an appointment, and it takes about two appointments to get a closing. Now, for those of you that have a team, and I coach a lot of teams, I coach a lot of big teams out there. This is the graphic that we go to when we're talking about lead gen with a team. And I want to break this down. One of the things that I know Brindley, uh, we're in Ben Kenny's masterclass. And one of the things we learned from Ben is that he, he makes us write this down often is I care about my hourly, mm -hmm. I care about my hourly wage, right? Yeah, you got it. Absolutely. I care about my hourly wage. So yeah. when, when we're talking to the teams, and I, I literally had a team today uh, where they were falling out of love with lead generation. And in this market, now more than ever, we need to fall in, with, in love with lead generation. I want to walk through this with you on the top here. So this shows the importance of lead generation. So, you know, the average price point right now, Brindley, if, if I'm right, in the United States is about $250,000. Does that sound about right to you? Right. Yep. Yeah. So if the average commission is 3%, what would the average GCI out of that be? You've got the calculator, Zach. It's way past my bedtime. <laughs> $7,500. $7,500. Are you tracking with me? That's right. Yeah, I'm tracking with you. So $7,500 is the average commission that we get when we close a house. And on a team, when I'm using this tool with my teams or with an individual, I have them put that number up there and you can make this number be whatever your actual number is. The cool thing is this also works for buyers, agents on your team, listings agents on your team. We can break the split down, but I want to show you the value when it comes to, I care about my hourly, hourly wage, the importance of us making sure that we're lead generating at a high level. Mm -hmm. So if we know on average, it takes two appointments to get one closing, and the average closing is $7,500. What's 7,500 divided by two? 
3250. No, my math's off. 3750. You're all right. 3750. Close. And I and I actually make my clients do the do the math, stuff their calculator. I'm gonna make you do that too. Do you got your phone by you? Pull the calculator up so that I don't look like an I, idiot. I love it. You don't <laughs> whatever. You're a rock star. Stop <laughs> it. So that means that every appointment we go on, if it's a horrible appointment and you, you just like crash and burn like flame is it, the best appointment ever, high five that person because on average, you just made $3,700. The next appointment, we're going to get this. So yeah. taking it a step back further, this is where it gets really fun. When we look at the leads, on average, it takes five leads to get appointment. And I want you to think about this friendly. So five leads to get one appointment, two appointments to get one closing, doing some more math right now. That's 10 leads to get a closing. Our mm -hmm. definition of a lead was, again, transacting this calendar year, ask them six connecting questions to determine their motivation. We've got permission to follow up and at least a piece of their contact information. And we put them in our CRM. Let me ask you, Brindley, if I, had, I gave you 10 of those and they met, met all those criteria, how many do you think you could close personally? Two. Two, absolutely. The average is one out of 10. And I bet with you, we all know it's going to be considerably higher than that. So these are like worst case scenario numbers. So again, if our appointments are worth $3,750, what's $3,750? And I'm going to do this with you divided by five. I did not know that you were going to require me to do so much math on this call. <laughs> $750. Boom. So every time, every time we get a hold of somebody and for you, honestly, if the ratios are two to 10, one to five, then we're doubling that. Every lead you put in your system is worth 1500 bucks for what we're doing right here. Every lead is worth $750. And this is where it gets really fun. And this is why you shouldn't pump your gas. You shouldn't mow your lawn unless you enjoy mowing your lawn. You should just lead generate and lead follow up. So it's 750 divided by 12. What does that work out to be? 6250. 6250. So when we're using the right scripts, when we're calling the right people, the right lead sources, every conversation that we have it's in real estate is worth $62.50. Now, if you're a buyer's agent, you have a 50-50 split, it's still worth like $31.25. Yeah. So when we, when we talk to these teams, when I talk to these teams and, and I find like there, there's a, a lack of wind in their sales when it comes to lead generation, this is the chart that we break out and it shows the importance of falling in love with lead generation. Mm -hmm. this, this is a game changer. Now you can see the prospecting efficiencies that we have in here even running, let's call that a medium efficiency. So not using a dialer, not having your lists pulled up, not really knowing what you're doing, we can attain medium efficiency. If you want to get to high efficiency, eight to 10 contacts or more an hour, we really have to have our things dialed in. So, but at medium efficiency, let's call it five contacts per hour. Let's multiply, multiply five by 6,250. What do you come up with? I was too busy taking a picture of your slide. I'll give you a copy of everything. Five is three hundred and twelve dollars and fifty cents an hour. An hour is what, we're making, is what we're making. Are you kidding me? Are you seriously think about like the lawyers that are out there, the the doctors that are out there? This is our potential. We have to memorize like five scripts. We have to learn to overcome objections. We have to, you know, one of the things that I, I was talking to Gary about. I was in one of the classes with Gary. He says that there's a, a propensity in our industry to go after and hunt, kill what we can bring back to the, the, the cave today. The, the game, going back to this slide, when we look again at these huge teams, these huge agents that are crushing it, mm -hmm. the magic comes with the cultivation phase. And in fact, when I started building these numbers out, we found that once you generated the lead, you hit all those criteria, that there were still some follow-ups that were involved in that. Mm -hmm. And so it, it takes between five to 12 follow-ups to turn these things into appointments, to turn these, the, these opportunities into appointments. You know what the difference is between five and, and 12? What causes it to be less? They're not qualified leads. There it is. There it is. So we haven't identified their motivation properly. Mm -mm. And part of it is 
are we using the proper scripts to make sure that we qualify these leads? You know, and Zach, a couple of things come to mind on that. Number one is, are we using scripts now or are we getting into more conversation and dialogue, right? It's we're, we're shifting into more of a relationship based sales process, if you want to call it. And so it's using the dialogue to make sure that we're clear on the motivation and bringing them back to motivation because they might be in fear right now. And then the other thing I wanted to ask you is if you're telling me as an agent that I can make $312 and 50 cents an hour, why as an agent, do I want to keep myself buried in $15 an hour work? Oh man. And that, and that's where that, that statement Ben keeps hitting us with over and over. I care about my hourly wage. Mm -hmm. You know, how, how often have you heard Gary say, you know, like the difference between him and us is the leverage mm -hmm. that he's put in his life. When, when we find someone that can do something 80% as good as we can, Gary says, Lever. we need to delegate that away. Totally. Yeah. When we, when we get really intentional, when we care about our hourly, hourly wage, the sky's the limit. And that, and that's precisely what I found it, like, it's not, it's not me, the magical coach helping my clients grow their business to 80% year over year. It's just shining a light on our activities. Renly, I, you, I, I love how you said that. Yeah. That's, what, that's what it comes down to. And so then the neat thing too, is like when you look at this, we can extrapolate this out a little bit further. Like if you're looking to get 50 closings for the year, how many appointments do we need to go on? A hundred. A hundred. How many leads do we need to get? 500. Five leads, we need two appointments. So we actually need a thousand. I'm throwing you through the math again. A thousand, a thousand, a thousand. A thousand leads. And so a thousand times 12 tells you we need to make 12,000 contacts for the year and breaking that down by the week. Now, this is the clarity, you know, the, the magic with coaching is like letting clarity do the heavy lifting here. Clarity is power, one of my favorite bold laws. Now we, we have a real clear picture on what we need to do to hit these numbers. Now, the question is, you know, as the coach, and this is something that we, we, we do, if you're calling 12 contacts and you're not finding a lead, what are they doing wrong, do you think? They're not having the right conversations or they're not talking to the right people. There it is. You know what? If we're circle prospecting, look, it, it's going to take me 100 of those conversations mm -hmm. to find that lead. Well, and let me stop you there. So if we want to do, if we go back to that 12,000 number and we want to do 100 closings for the year, that means that we have to have a thousand contacts a month. Correct. If we're at 12,000 contacts divided by 12, that's a thousand contacts a month. So in, in our, it will back it up again. So hundred closings would mean 200 appointments would when the, mean when did we say, what was the first math that got us to the 12,000 contacts? 50, 50, 50 closings. So if you want 50 closings, right. Then a thousand contacts a month and contacts a month. Right. Breaking that down to the week or the ridiculous. Well, break it down to like, so a thousand divided by 30, we're at 33 contacts. And that's if you're lead generating seven days a week. Right. So if we say 33.33 repeating times five days a week, 33, come on. You could just do a thousand divided by 20, Zach. That would give you a five day work week for four weeks. There you go. Look at, see, not you, the math is coming out 50 contacts. However, look at what we have going on up here. Like, so if I, if I do circle prospecting, that's going to be a long, hard road to get to those closings. There's some benefits to circle prospecting. You're going to have less competition when you're dealing out there. That's why the sphere is the king. When we look at these leads that were cut coming in. Now, another thing that we're going to go over on this call, I'm going to show you is what we got going on with our internet lead generation. My, my wife's company on average, she's in a e-commerce business. We spend between 10 and $15,000 a month on pay-per-click ads. And so we, we, we understand that at a high level. And I'm going to jump into that in a second, but I don't want to like skirt over this, this point here. Like this is, um, this is magical. When you have clarity on your business, you'll see exactly what you need to be doing in there. And just like we started to walk down that path. So we talked about if you're, if you don't, if you're not, if you're calling these people and we're not finding, we're not finding the leads in there. It's the conversations. It's the sources that we're talking about when we're going on the appointments. If we're not turning these appointments into signed buyer contracts or signed listing contract, we're taking a look at the presentation. We're taking a look at our objection handlers. And so now suddenly 
looking at that 50, go, go from, from 50 to 100. So now instead of 12,000 contacts, we're talking 24,000 or even go to 1,000. Like now we're talking Lance Loken territory, right? Like some of the players that are out there, you know, yeah. Lance is doing somewhere over 2,000, I think, last time I checked. So it, it's leverage. It's putting the leverage in, in their world that they're making this amount of contacts, they're nurturing this amount of people. And now, the, like Gary says, there's no known limit to what we're doing in real estate. And we've turned it literally into a game. Zach, I want it to be fun and I just want to throw money at it. I just want to <laughs> buy leads. Well, you know, you know, that's definitely an option. You know, there's three ways we could grow our business, right? We could wait for it. And there's plenty of agents that do that. They, they wait for it long enough and you're in there long enough, you'll have an okay business. You can pay for it. We can throw all the money that we want at Zillow and the internet leads. We're going to get into that in a second too. Uh, and you, you can do it that way. I, I know agents that are spending tens of thousands of dollars a month on Zillow. And, you know, as the market shifts, their, their margins are even, they're razor thin now. Wait until the market starts going down and they can't convert those leads. The third way, the best way that you and I know is we work for it. And I, I'm, I'm asking you right now, is, is $312 an hour worth working for something? I would say so. <laughs> I would too. Because <laughs> I don't know about your state, but in my state, it's a 40-hour class. You pass a test, you're a realtor. <laughs> I didn't have to go to medical school for eight years and then do an internship and then do all those other things. No. Uh, this is an amazing opportunity that we have. And when you boil this down, you turn this, like I said, into a game, um, we get some pretty amazing things. Yeah. And if there's any questions, if you see any questions popping up, I, I'd love to answer any of those questions. But from here, I, I was going to jump into some internet leads, if that's okay with you. I'm not seeing any questions yet, but if you guys have questions, put them in the chat box. I am watching. So this is some, of, like I told you, my wife has a business. She has an e-commerce business, a, a small manufacturing company here in West Michigan. Uh, she has about 30 employees. And so we, we spend between ten and $15,000 a month on her pay-per-click ads. And so this is something that I, I know uh, at an intimate level on, on what we're doing here. The gift that we have with command, and again, you can do this with other, you can do this straight through Facebook. You don't have to have command to do this. It just so happens that I'm with Keller Williams and I'm a maps coach, and this is just stupid easy to do it through command. This is an ad that I ran, um, and this ad actually ended up finishing up. You can see we were at a $25 spend rate. We generated 181. The cost per lead generated was 14 cents a lead. Hmm. 14 cents a lead. If you look at what uh, Commissions Inc. and Boomtown, both platforms that I've had before, we were spending between 15 and $25 a lead. Mm -hmm. And these leads, some of these leads, Brindley, are better than the leads that we were getting out of sync. And so I'm going to show you some of this. In command, correct, Zach? This is actually my command page. This is a snapshot of my command page. And so this ad ended up finishing up. We spent $50. Uh, this was an ad I ran uh, last week. You can see uh, it ended on the 16th. Um, we ended up getting just shy. It was like 294 leads out of this for 50 bucks. And it ended up being 17 cents a lead. Okay. So I'm going to throw some objections at you that I hear about Facebook ads. Absolutely. Back to that screen for me. So I spent... $300 in five days and I didn't get anything. I don't understand how these people are spending $25 and getting a 14 cent cost per lead and getting over a thousand clicks. Help me understand what, why their ads are different than mine. What am I doing wrong? Are you doing this? <laughs> oh, good. Hey, there you go. Nice setup. Three to four pictures. As realtors, Brindley, our, our temptation is to put every picture on there. Our temptation is to put the address of the property on there. Our temptation is to put the bedrooms, the bathrooms. Our temptation is to give away everything without getting them to raise their hand. Keep in mind, our objective when we're running Facebook ads isn't to sell the house, at least right away. It's to get them to raise their hand so that we can have a conversation. Number two in here, I say always use the Facebook form lead capture page. Now, why I say that is, so in command, when you're going through, you're building this form and you can do this in, in Facebook on its own too. When that, that Facebook lead capture, uh, um, the form comes up, it, Facebook pre-populates that with accurate data. And so there's a, an accurate cell phone number there. There's an accurate name in there. There's an accurate email in there. 
when you get bad information that the, the lead in there actually had to go in there and change the items that are in there. And so what we're finding is that by doing it like this, compared to what I had with Commission Zinc and with Boomtown, our data is much more accurate. Number three here is creating ir urgency and fear of loss or FOMO, you know, fear of missing out. Mm -hmm. So with the ad, and I'm going to show that ad that we ran here in just a second where we had, and I'm watching the time, keep me, we're, we're I'm going to have to fly through this. I'm getting so many, this is great that we're just going to talk and then until I, okay. fall, I'm just kidding. <laughs> wife wouldn't appreciate that we're going to keep going because this is okay this is gold I, if they like us on gamify uh real estate on the facebook page we're gonna we put more of this i just launched that two months ago i haven't put the time i wanted into it but i guarantee you i am sinking a lot more time into that so fear of missing out i'm creating urgency so the 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 copy that i'm writing the words that i put in there i want to elicit that fear of loss so we'll sell quickly set your appointment now, you know, those kind of, that, that kind of verbiage. And like when you go into our actual gamify class that we do, which I'd be more than happy to offer your audience for free. Um, we get into the actual ad copy. And so if you look at some of the greats out there um, and now I'm drawing a blank and then maybe it's in some of these other ones, but Neil Patel really sticks out. He's uh, one of the internet guys that really helped us with my, my wife's business designing this copy. That fear of missing out is huge. Uh, number four is getting into the, the mind of your target audience. What are they really looking for? Like if I'm, if I'm advertising a first time, you know, buyer style of a house, you know, think about a first time home buyer, Brindley, what are they looking for? What, wh where are they coming from usually? Well, they usually, I mean, the first time I'm not quite sure, Zach. Well, think about it. You know, a lot of them are renting. Some of them, maybe they're living with parents, but a lot of them are renting and like, what can you do? at a house, what, then what can't you do at a rental? That's true. That's a good point. So get, get into their, their, their head. And then like, think about like a move up buyer, depending on how much of a move up buyer it is, get in their mind, you know, take, take a step back, put yourself in their shoes and say like, so this is a move up buyer house, you know, in a, in a, so they're looking for a nicer neighborhood, a bigger yard, maybe a fenced in yard, a school district, those kind of things. So we're, we're really getting into the, the target audience's head is what we're trying to do. I think the reason that was hard for me, Zach, but it brought the point across is that, so my, my first home that I purchased is a main house. And then I have a garage with a mother-in-law apartment above the garage. Right. So if I was, if I was marketing this home now, I would be getting in the mind of anyone from a, someone that's in a situation with me, with an elderly parent or an investor that wants dual cash flow property. Like it's, exactly. you really have to get specific and intentional about the property you're marketing too. That's the best part about this is that like, so if we're going after an investor, we can actually say like, I'm writing this ad as like, I would want an investor's hat to be. And so then I'm going to write the copy designed for that. And then I can AB test that against the person that's looking for the mother-in-law suite and see what we're doing. And this is kind of like a 201 version of this class, but that's, that's brilliant what you just said there. And so roll there. So what you just basically told me is that if I took this to the next level, I could write the copy for an investor, but then I could run a test to see if an investor is more interested in that property or if the buyer with the mom is more. Is that what you're telling One, me? 100%. 100%. And, that, and that's, again, the gift with Command is that these ads are just so darn cheap that I'm spending a whopping 10 bucks to test it. Once my ad has legs, then I'm going to blow it up to a whopping $50 and I'm going to watch the leads pour in. And then we're going to see what works and what doesn't work. And we've, we're doing all kinds of ads. So like with the, the new KW um, consumer app download, I think that's in here later in here. We had, I spent less than $2 a piece to get 17 people to download and start using our app. Guys, in Michigan, in, in the state of Michigan, uh, they shut down our industry. If we looked outside Brindley, we got in a thousand dollar fine. We were able to find houses virtually that wanted to sell market them virtually to the buyers and sell them with no one actually going to see the house other than the seller that lived there. We all, we did, we did this with four properties in the, in the four or five weeks that we were locked down. And so this is the gift that we have when we really understand this and yeah. I'm more than happy to give this away. This is actually some of the ads that I was talking about virtual open houses, which those have been huge. Yeah. Absolutely huge. So in, you know, don't overcomplicate it. All I'm doing is running an ad saying there's a virtual open house. People sign up and then I do a Facebook live. Yeah. the open house and a bunch of people raise their hand because there's a lot of people that are scared right now. And you know, COVID is a scary thing. They're scared to go out. Yeah. And so this is a safe way for them to take a look at houses and interact with you guys. And I think if you uh, 
remember a few things, three to four pictures, write yeah. the copy in the mind of the buyer. Yes. Create FOMO. Like yeah. out of those seven, six things, if you just did those three things, I bet you would see massive, massive increase in conversion. Totally. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. That, yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. It, these were, these are some of the ones that price reductions are huge too on this. We're getting massive price reductions so we can show that. Um, the seminars are, have been great recruiting talent right now. Mm -hmm. You know, this is something that, um, again, with command, it's untouchable. Yeah. I have an ad agency that works with us with, uh, my wife's company now that manages the, the ads from a day-to-day -day basis. I'm checking in on it weekly. Um, they, they can't touch the price that I'm getting out of this. And so this is, this is the, the KW AI married with the Facebook AI. And that's the best part too, Brindley, is that even the, some of these leads that you get are fake that the, the, the software is finding the right demographic based off the pictures, based off their search history, based off what they're guessing their income is. And it gets pretty, pretty darn accurate. And so this is, this is a game changer, what we found. And to be able to honestly, to take uh, listings completely from our couch and sell them, mm. that, that's awesome. So and tell me how we're, go ahead. No questions. Um, Joel's asking, what about your leads that are weeks, months, years old? better time spent on the new leads coming in or going back and digging through the old ones? You know, the script that I'll share with you guys works phenomenally well on old leads. We know, Brindley, that there was about 9 billion real estate web searches last year. People can't get enough of real estate. They're eating it up left and right. And so like the, the tool that I use with Command, we have the, the neighborhood reports. It shows them what's going on in their neighborhood, what we're tracking, what, what used to be between about 60 to 90 seconds on our internet websites, uh, our, our real estate websites is now between about six and eight minutes. And so the, going back to answer that question, um, those old leads, if we set them up on a smart neighborhood report or a, a, the, the biweekly neighborhood report, they're going to start reengaging with your website. Mm -hmm. There weren't anywhere near 9 billion real estate purchases. People though can't get enough of real estate. And look at what's going on with the stock market right now. Mm -hmm. It's an incredible roller coaster right now. Yeah. You know, it went from the, the, the highs to the lows. It's bouncing back up and it's going up and down. The same thing, people are wondering what's going on mm -hmm. in, their, in, their, in their neighborhood. And when we send out this information to them, they can't get enough of it. Yeah. So I've got one for you. Yeah. Um, I had a lot of Zillow spend before the pandemic hit. And when we cut expenses, we had to cut all of our Zillow spend. And now we've seen our inbound leads drastically drop. How do we re-engage and start generating inbound leads as quickly as possible? Jump in, and if they're a KW agent, jump into command and run an ad. Um, you know, one of the things like, let's jump over to the ads. So these are a couple of the ads that we had some major success with. One of the things that a lot of agents have forgotten because HUD foreclosures have been a thing in the past, so they're starting to come back right now. And they're going to be a big thing here, uh, I think, in, in the next few months as you know, people continue on the forbearance program and they're not able to make payments. Um, any agent can advertise HUD foreclosures. There's certain regulations that you have to have. You got to check with your broker for all the rules. It's different for each state, but most of the states. So I, I have about 35 uh, clients that I'm coaching right now at a high level with this. Mm -hmm. all of them can run these ads and we're getting massive success off of it. So to that person that said that I cut my Zillow ad spend, I'm running some foreclosure ads. You know, this, this ad right here, this one generated almost 300 leads for us. And this was similar ad spend about 50 bucks. This is a, a 20 acre foreclosure. Um, it was close to the city. This was less than a hundred thousand dollars. So when you hear that Brindley, what do you think the shape of this house was on the inside? Not good. Nightmare. Yeah, it's a nightmare. You can see there's a pond in the front yard. The, the, this house is horrible. And you know, but the thing what happened here was that we had 300 leads that people that raised their hand said, Hey, I'm interested in that house. We start telling them about the we walk them through the scripts first. And then like you said, developing that relationship, getting in rapport with them, we start telling them about the house. Well, you know, Zach, maybe I don't want a nightmare of a house. And in fact, really, here's what we're looking for. We found six viable pieces of business that will, that should close this year based off this $50 ad. So that's how I would answer that question. Wow. Wow. And it's just by getting creative. And again, I hear you again. I got into the head of the buyer. What is going to make people come to me? And then once they right. come, 
me, I can shift the mindset. I can find the motivation. I can find out what's really going on. It's not about selling a home at that, at that moment. It's about getting, what is it Ben says? Saying the right thing and saying it in front of enough people. Oh man. Right. And doing it enough times and doing it enough times. That that's totally it. And so we're generating a massive traction with it. Um, and this is, this is our script and you know, I'm more than happy to come back. If you want me to come back or we can keep going, you tell me what you want to do here. Do we're going to keep going for about five or 10 more minutes. And then we're going to do a round table with you in two weeks. Okay. Well, let's get through this script because I want to share with you guys this script. We'll, we'll, we'll just end it here. So this is the, the magic that's happening. And I'm, I'm going to tell you the opening line for our script, Brindley, that we use, it's mission critical to, to deliver it word for word verbatim. You're going to overcome 65% of the objections from delivering your opening line properly. And I want to jump back to this right here. For This is now three years of data that we have. So I, I need to change that on the presentation. But you can see on average, we're getting 22, uh, a 22% call to contact ratio. The protocol that we're using is, a, is call, call text. So we call the, the lead immediately. Speed is the key. If you're using command, your Kelly app will tell you when they're coming through. Mm -hmm. The old norm used to be within five minutes. And so we had to call within five minutes. It's under a minute now. So I call. If they don't answer, I immediately, I hang up, I call again. Mm -hmm. If they don't answer the second time, I shoot a text. Got it. And I shoot a text with the opening line. From the when we get them on the phone, go ahead. Calling twice, third time text. Call, call, text. Yep. Call, don't answer, call them again immediately. You think about like when you get a number right now that calls your phone, how often do you answer it if you don't know that number? Never. Never. But if that number calls again, you're gonna think this person really wants to get a hold of me. Yeah. And so you're more much more likely to answer the phone. Now, here's the cool thing. And this number, this, this really should blow your mind is that once we get them on a, the phone, we have a 35% contact to appointment ratio when you're using our script. And we're going to go over that script here in just a second. And then finally, a 25% appointment to sold ratio, which means that we're tracking when you generate 100 leads. And remember, I told you that one ad that we ran, there's a couple of them that we, for 50 bucks, we generated 300 leads. When you generate 100 leads, you're getting 22 contacts. Mm -hmm. For the 22 contacts, you're getting eight appointments. Mm -hmm. You get those eight appointments, you get three closings. This, this is a game changer. Before, and the reason we got out of this, Brindley, is that this got expensive. Everyone jumped into this game. One of the things that Boomtown and Sync does right now, and I'm not meaning to beat up on Boomtown and Sync, um, maybe I am a little bit, they, they mark up the cost of the leads. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so this, this is, this is a gift that Gary's given us. And so the script, going to the script, the opening line, mission critical. There's a few don'ts. Number one, don't ask, how are you? Why do you think that is? Because, tell me why, Zach. Think about a high D. Why would a high D, when you don't know somebody, not want you to ask, how are you? I don't want to waste my time. You don't know me. Oh, yeah. yeah, right. A high I. Now I'm going to get the life story of what happened for the week, right? So we don't yeah. ask, how are you? Because yeah. we, we don't want to perturb them. Don't say your team name or brokerage. That's you know, it. Part, yeah. They're, they're signing up on a lot of real, real estate websites. Nine billion searches. I'm not making that number up. In 2019, nine billion real estate web searches. Don't say the website name. Don't say the, 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 the you signed up on the site. You know, that's a big brother kind of thing. And don't yeah. use their name in the beginning. No. The thing I want them to do, I want my agents to do, I want my coaching clients to do is to listen really closely when they answer the phone. This is where language of sales comes yeah. in. So if someone's like, hello, then I'm going to bring my energy up. I'm going to be fast. I'm going to be rapid fire with the opening line. If they're slower, which pains me to death, like it drives me nuts, I will slow down and I will mirror and match them. So yeah. mirror and matching is quick. And as you get into the conversation, then, and as you get into rapport, which we're going to talk about that, then you can speed it up and you can get to a level that you feel comfortable. But this is the opening line. And I'm going to tell you that people have the fear of rejection. Yep. When we're calling these people, they don't want to feel rejection. So your opening line is as follows. Hello, this is Zach from the home search site. Are you looking to buy a home in the next three to six months? Or are you just browsing? What do you think 98% of people say, Brindley? I'm just browsing. Totally. 
And then my next line is this script. Oh man, do I not have it in there? I don't have it in there. I will send the script out or we can do the round table. That is exactly what the site is for. What are you browsing for? Mm, I love that. So I'm that browsing and then you say, awesome. That's exactly what the site is for. What are you browsing? Now you've opened it up and you've invited them in instead of have a conversation. Exactly. And th that fear of rejection is gone. Like, oh my gosh, I thought, Brindley, I thought you were one of those real estate agents that was going to ask for an appointment. Oh, that went for the jugular, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm just browsing. And then the, the script, and I have the whole script. I'm more than happy. I thought it was in this presentation. Again, uh, Coach Z at kw.com if you want it, or find us on Gamify. I'll put that Gamify uh, real estate on Facebook. I'll put it there too. The idea though is we're now getting into rapport. With mm. them. And I'll, I'll end on this part right here. Um, but rapport is when they know you, they like you, they trust you, and they know you have a solution. Mm. You can see there's a big, ugly, rusty knife there on the bottom. I'm looking for that rusty knife. I'm looking for the pain. You know, people are either pulling themselves towards pleasure or pushing themselves away from pain. And that's something I was in a class with Abe Shreve. Well, I know you know Abe Shreve yesterday. And he was talking yeah. about this at a high level. And so a lot of people are just looking. So thinking back to that, that graph that I showed you guys, a lot of these people are going to go into the cultivate phase. Mm -hmm. We know internet leads take between 12 and 18 months. A lot of them do. Some of them are going to convert much sooner than later. And it's up to us to listen, to get into rapport. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I tell my, my teams that I, I coach, you know, a common thing is that the, the teams will complain, all these leads suck. Mm -hmm. all these all these internet leads are horrible these leads are trash and when when we hear the phrase all these leads suck we say you suck <laughs> no we don't say that I, I, I literally yeah I'm, I, I literally do I'm, that's a little bit out of the candor side with me and the reason I say that is because you got to get into rapport with these people yeah. before people care what you know they, they need to know that you care mm -hmm. we and so we have to slow down we have to find that pain so they're in the positive present. They're looking for a house right now. We move them to the negative present. We move them to the negative future, go to the positive future. We go through this with the whole class, but I'm looking for that pain point. You know, what are you just browsing for? Well, I really need Brindley a four bedroom house. And why is that important? Well, the kids right now, we have three bedrooms. They're sharing a room. I can't tell you COVID's a little crazy. I think my kids are going to murder each other if I don't find something else. Oh man, now I'm going to keyword backtrack. So your kids are fighting a little bit and it would be a lot easier if you had a, a house with a bedroom. Oh my gosh, yes. You know, and they're, they're venting, they're telling me about the pain. And so then I can go for the clothes. And now, you know, now you can write the prescription because you've diagnosed. Oh my gosh. Right. That's an eloquent way to put it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You're not giving Advil for a broken arm. No, not yeah. at all. Yeah. I, I love it. I love it. Zach, this has been amazing, guys. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Everything works out the way it's supposed to. Um, we have some surprises coming. So Zach will be back, um, whether he likes it or not, because I think- oh, yeah. Anything for you. Thank you, Zach. And um, how do they get a hold of you and where do they send their referrals? And then tell them a little bit about your class. And do you have, um, do you have spots open on your coaching roster? Because guys, if I could get on Zach's coaching roster, I would make that happen. I, I might have one right now. It, it's, it's pretty full right now. So, you know, we're looking for the real, the humble, the hungry and the smart people that are out there. And so yeah. pretty full with the roster. However, we are in West Michigan. Um, the team is never too busy for your referrals out there. If you would like a copy of the script, check us out. It's going to be, a, there's a lot more coming on the Gamify uh, real estate Facebook page. And so find us on that Gamify real estate yeah, we'll have you post a link in the comments of this video and that way they can just find the link and they can go join the site. Yeah, and then my my I, my assistant runs that email because I'm going to tell you one of my uh, limitations is email. I hate email and I, I know that's a bad affirmation and I'm fine with that. Yeah. Um, Coach Z though at kw.com, she's a wizard. Yeah. She'll get you these scripts immediately. She'll get everything out to you. She'll share this presentation if you want that. And then if you watch the Gamify Real Estate Facebook page, I'll let you know when the next classes we're teaching and I'd be more than happy to do anything for you, Brindley. 
Oh, you're so sweet, Zach. Thank you so much, guys. Follow this guy. He really knows what he's talking about. Um, so many great nuggets. If you didn't take anything away today, I challenge you, just go throw 50 bucks out there. Put an ad together using um, Zach's six steps. Make sure you only put three or four pictures. Make sure that you put some FOMO in there and also get into the head of the person that's going to be reading the ad. What is going to make them call you? I love what Zach did with the foreclosure ad, and he just threw an ad out there just to get the traffic. And then he used his dialogues and scripts to convert. So I, th I just think that's amazing, Zach. So many good things in this presentation. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Have a great night, guys. We'll see you Friday morning with Jordan Freed. Bye. Hey, Brindley.